All righty, it's seven o'clock. We'll get started. So happy to see you. I'm recording. I've got the um, closed captioning on. I think I've remembered everything today. So anyway, so glad to see you. And um, we are continuing on our little talk about anatomy today. So, um, and I'm outside. We don't have, it's, it's October here and it's going to start getting cold. But I thought, well, I still can. I'll do some outdoor Zooms. So glad you're here. And it will start getting chillier for sure. I'll start having to wear coats and jackets and things like that. So, all righty. Anyway, we're talking about anatomy again, but um, I'm going to start continue like we did last week, just getting ready, do some, some, a little bit of yogic work before we start. So it'll, you maybe help us um, with the rest of the talk today. So you can close your eyes or soften the eyes a little bit for a moment. And we're going to check in from head to toe. So um, check in with your head. How does your head feel, your eyes, your jaw, your teeth, your tongue, even your lips. How does the head feel today? And then coming down to the neck, how does the neck feel today? You could even move it around a little side to side. Notice how the neck's feeling right now at this moment. And then the shoulders, you could do a few shoulder rolls. How does the shoulders feel today? Maybe a little the extra other direction, good. And then your hands, maybe spread the fingers wide, make fists and notice how the hands feel on the elbows. And then whether you're sitting or standing, just notice how the rib cage feels and the belly feels today. Um, moving down, you know, how, you know, how's your tummy feel today? What's going on inside? Any gurgling or um, have you drank enough water today? And going down to the hips, how do the hips feel? the upper legs, the knees, the calves and shins, and the feet. You know, just notice, you don't have to move them. You can even with your brain, just check in on the muscles, get the muscles. Think, you you know, what you put in your, in your mind, they've proved is you could sit here and, and think about you're out for a run and actually um, the muscles actually feel that run or react to that run. So that's why premier athletes do a lot of visualization. So a lot of research on that. Anyway, so we've checked on the body head to toe. Now I want you to check in on your emotions. How are you feeling today? Or how are you feeling right now? Be the observer of those emotions. Acknowledge them and let them be. There's no right or wrong. There's just acknowledging them and letting them be. And then your thoughts. What's going on in your mind right now? So anything reoccurring that's been reoccurring in your mind today, be the observer of your thoughts. You are not your mind or your thoughts. You're the observer. You have control of your thoughts, right? So observe what's going on in the mind right now. Acknowledge those thoughts and let them be. And then your energy level. How's your energy level right now? Do you feel high energy, low, somewhere in between? Honor your energy level right now, how you're feeling energy-wise. And then to the breath, we're going to do actually a centering breath. And I just was on a webinar last week, this new exciting research. It's, it's, a, it's a yogic breathing practice, but they've actually um, done some research to see if it really works to bring back equilibrium. So whether you're in a, in a st stressful mode or a sad or depressed mode, this breathing practice is shown to bring you back to center, back to that equilibrium or sattvic um, equilibrium. So we're going to try it. I'll explain it first, and then we'll do it together. I'll do it once with you, and then I want you to do it a couple times on your own because everybody breathes at a different rate. So basically, you're going to take an inhale through the nose at 50%. Then another inhale through the nose till you feel like your lungs are full at 100%. Once they're full, you're going to bring the chin down to the chest to lock in the air. You stay there till you feel like you are ready to exhale. When you're ready to exhale, you lift the chin up, you let the air out the mouth. And while you're doing that, you lift the pelvic floor, you lift the, the uh, belly muscles, have those come in and up towards the diaphragm. So everything's lifting. It's almost like your belly button is coming in and then up to the rib cage. Okay. So that explains it. So we're going to do it once together and then a couple times on your own. So we're going to take an inhale, 50%, another inhale to hundred percent, and then lock in the breath. So the chin comes down to the chest. 
And once you're ready to exhale, you lift the chin up, let the air out the mouth. And while you're doing that, everything's lifting. The pelvic floor is lifting. The belly is coming in. It's lifting up towards the diaphragm. And then you let go and then you start again. So we'll do it a second or third time. I'll talk you through it. So you're gonna take an inhale to 50% and then a second sip of air through the nose to 100%. When you're done doing that, you lock in the air with the chin to the chest. When you're ready to exhale, you go at your own pace. You let the, the chin comes up, the air comes out the mouth and everything lifts. The belly comes in, the pelvic floor lifts, the belly button comes in and up towards the diaphragm, really like it's supporting the diaphragm, even though the diaphragm doesn't need any help. It's a strong muscle. Feel like those core muscles are coming in to support that diaphragm. All right, we're gonna do that one more time. So you're gonna take a sip of air, 50% at your own pace and then another sip of air, 100%. And then lock in the air with the chin. When you're ready, you may be able to hold your breath for a while. When you're ready to let that air out, go ahead, bring the chin up, let the air out the mouth, and feel everything lift up. Good, awesome. And then, just breathe normally and notice how you feel. Did it bring some equilibrium to you? And now coming back to the body, how does the body feel in the space? What kind of space are you in right now? Are you sitting? Are you standing? Are you walking? Uh, while you're listening to this, is there voices in the room? What are the sounds and sights and smells of the space you're in? And how does your body feel touching whatever surface it's touching? It may be just the bottom of your feet. So notice that. All right, awesome. So now we're ready to begin talking a little bit more about anatomy. And I got some questions last week and I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And I'm gonna start a presentation. And here we are. So we will come over. I think I showed this on, on one of the other weeklies, but I wanted to show you this artwork. It is just amazing, this artwork. So um, this gentleman, he's in England, actually. This, this is a piece of, you can actually buy a piece of the artwork, but it covers a wall of this museum. And basically he had women volunteer to take plasters of their whole undersides, everything. Um, and then they plastered it and then they took the plaster cast off and then they made the sculptures from it. So you can see just from, you know, this is a few, his art is like across a whole long wall in this museum. And people can actually now order their own um, from around the world. You can just order the plaster casting and, and you do it and then you send it back to the artist and that kind of thing. But anyway, this is so interesting because I think um, somebody said, oh, I don't want to look at myself, you know, with a mirror, put a mirror on the floor and look really what's down there because it's probably changed a lot since wherever. But look at the beauty of this, how different, you know, the pelvic floor is, you know, the, the vulva, you know, the, everything, how really gorgeous. You're looking at the outside of the pelvic floor, the skin that covers it. Um, you know, some of the anatomy that, you know, that covers that pelvic floor, but look how beautiful that is. This is art. So remembering your body is beautiful. You are unique. And just look at this. There's no one the same, just like your fingerprints. There's no, nobody's the same. You can see by this artwork, we're all unique and beautiful. So remember that, you know, when I make the suggestion, Hey, you know, put a mirror down, really look at your beautiful, unique body and um you know squat over a mirror because that's the only way you're going to be able to really see it so anyway i just i wanted to share that because i think this is just so amazing so let's talk anatomy so 
you know, we talked last week and I want to go over it again because we're going to be working some other parts of our pelvic floor. Last week, we, uh, and you can go back and watch it. I'll, I'll share the YouTube link and, or in the, if you're in the Facebook group, you can see it from last week. But we, we uh, did side to side using those two sit bones to stretch apart and then come together. Well, today, this week, we're going to do front to back. So, and I want you to be able to visualize it while we do these. So we're gonna go over the anatomy again. So your pelvic floor here is a side view, right? So it attaches to the tailbone and that's what we're gonna be working today. The tailbone all the way to the pubic bone, those two attachments. Remember it's in a triangle, right? Um, how it attaches. Then, you know, here you have um, your urethra, your bladder, your uterus, if you still have your uterus here in the vaginal opening. And then we have our bowel and our opening here, our anal opening. And so those are all coming through the musculature. And then what's important, you know, to remember it's connected front to back, right? And then looking from the bottom, just like we saw those, um, that artwork and sculptures, so we're looking at the bottom, but without the skin, we're seeing the muscles and the bones. So you can see it's a big triangle, how they connect. They connect again to the front to that pubic bone. You can even take your hand and feel that pubic bone right in the front of your pelvis. And then here's the attachment to your tailbone all the way in the back, right? And then here are your two, they're ischial tubercles, but a lot of people, we just call them sits bones. Those are the two bony protrusions that you sit that you're supposed to sit on. Some people sit on the tailbone, which isn't made for sitting. Those two ischial tubercles are made for sitting. And then you can see the musculature here and you can see the openings again. Here's your urethral um, opening and your vaginal opening. And here's the sphincter that goes around those two openings. This is for, of course, a person with a uterus. And here's the um, sphincter that goes around the anal opening. So they're circular. Then you have these cross muscles and you have muscles going around that are connecting. So everything's connected to these four bony protrusions. And that's how we can move that. The um, By moving our pelvis, that's how we can move these muscles. So, and think about the muscles as being interstitial. They're woven together. They're not like stacked on top of each other. They're all interwoven. Um, and, and then looking at this too, if you've had a child and had a episiotomy, this is where they would have cut right in the perineum, which is the area between um, the vaginal opening and the anal sphincter. Uh, you have your perineum here. And, you know, this is where you would have been maybe torn or had the doctor had cut to make the opening larger. So, and this is um, what heals, but there is scar tissue, you know, either way for whenever that happens. All right. So that's a reminder here, and I'm gonna go stop sharing here. Oops. There we go, back to Zoom. So, Think about that anatomy, that triangle, right? Front and back, side to side. So we work the side to side. Again, go back and look at um, the video from last week. We did some side to side, bringing the uh, sit bones apart and bringing them together, just, just with the musculature. All right, so today we're going to do um, some front and back. And you may have heard this movement, but we call it cat-cow. Now cat-cow, you can do seated, you can do it standing or you can do it on hands and knees. I'm gonna show it standing and I'm gonna back up. Hopefully you can see me back up here. I better get the screen down a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go a little farther. Hopefully, let's see. All right, so I'm gonna bring my shirt up a little. So if you're standing, you wanna hands on thighs. And all we're doing here is we're bringing our tailbone up to the sky. So you're making this arch in the back, the head and chest come up. So you've got an arch in the back and the tailbone is going up. So even, so if you're sitting on a chair, your, your um, tailbone is going back, but you're arching the back. If you're in a chair, you can even put your hands around and grab the back of the chair just to help with that arch 
that's why I like doing uh, this in chair on a chair, but I'm standing today. So, so we're arching the back. Think about the tail. So what's that tail doing? It's pulling the pelvic floor muscles back, right? Yeah. So now we're going to into cat. So cat pose, come out here a little bit. Bring my shirt up here. So cat pose, we're rounding the back. The chin's coming to the chest. The tailbone is going towards the heels and we're rounding the back. Belly is coming in. If you're, um, if you're on all fours or if you're standing, think of the, the middle of the back actually um, going up towards the sky, right? So you want that middle of the back. I'll, I'll bend over a little more. So, so we're arching the back up, right? So when you think about that, what's that doing? So the tailbone is pulling. And if you're in the chair, so you're gonna round, you're gonna put your hands on your knees, your thighs, and you're gonna round the back. So when you're doing cat, right, the pubic bone is coming forward and it's pulling the muscles forward and the tailbone down, right? And then come back up into cow, arch the back, tail up to the sky, right? And then exhale, rounding the back, tailbone towards the heels, the pubic bone goes forward. So it's pulling the muscles. So we're working the lower back too, but I want you to think about the pelvis. I don't want you to think about what the back is doing. I want you to think about the pelvis. Is it coming up and is it going down? So you could even do it standing. You can tuck the tail, tuck that tailbone down towards the heels. We don't want to stand like this, but just as an example, and then put the tailbone back like you're sticking your rear out behind you, right? Let's try that again. Bring the pubic bone forward, tail's going down. So we never wanna walk like this. We never wanna stand like this because it takes the support out of the arch, but it does work the pelvis. So good, just some back and forth. And then go ahead and do, do some, if you're standing, yeah, this'll be harder if you're sitting. So you might wanna stand up or you can do it while you're on all fours. It's just a little hula of the hips around just to relax the lower back and go the other way. Because if you haven't done this move in a long time, you can start to feel it in the lower back and you want to be able to release, just releasing with the hips around and then around the other way. Do that again. Good. And I should have explained this bandage. I didn't hurt myself. I gave blood today. So that's why I've got a bandage here. They take, took blood out of my left arm today. So don't think, oh my gosh, what happened to Liz? <laughs> blood donation. <laughs> anyway, so that's all I had today. Um, I, so go back and look at the other video on how to spread the pelvic floor side to side and internally those two sit bones that side to side. And then you can practice this cat cow stretching forward and backwards of the pelvis so it'll get some blood flow moving it gets you know the musculature engaged and um yeah and i'm just gonna look at the chat yep so i don't see any questions today so i'll see everybody next week um i'll have the new topic for next week and uh and uh tell you what's next week, but I usually base it on what questions I get after this video. But um, if I don't get any questions, we'll move on to um, maybe a few more yoga asanas for uh, the pelvic floor. All righty. We'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.